Hey y'all, it's Grizz here at Windmill Farms in North Mississippi. <clears throat> now the adventure I want y'all to join me on today is going to be a little bit different than normal, but y'all come on and join me today as we talk about gun rights and due process. Hey y'all, welcome back. Um, as I said on uh, the intro, this week is about gun rights and due process. What's brought this up is this week, January the 16th, um, Senate Bill 2055 was uh, introduced to the uh, uh, committee bodies of the state of Mississippi, and that was Senate Bill 2055, which is a red flag law. Now, if y'all don't know what a red flag law is, red flag law is basically a gun control law permitting police or family members to petition a court for the temporary removal of firearms from a person's uh, presence because of their danger to themselves or their danger to others. Now, let's stop right there. That sounds wonderful. I have no problem with that. That is excellent. If we have someone who's going to do harm to themselves or to others, I have no problem with a court saying, Let's go help this person. Let's take their guns away from them long enough till we get them taken care of, or at least get the guns given to somebody else in the family that doesn't reside with them. And let's do it that way. Great. I don't want to see anybody hurt with guns. I don't want to see anybody, you know, getting themselves or anybody else hurt with them. By all means, let's do that. Problem with red flag laws is, is it's what they're called an ex parte proceeding, which means the person that you're saying is going to hurt themselves or hurt others is not giving due process in their presentation to the judge during this proceeding to get the guns taken away from them. Now, most other laws, <clears throat> you have to go before a grand jury and you are presented with the evidence and you are in front of the judge with the district attorney the district attorney will say that we're charging mr larry with such and such you can say hey i'm guilty of that i punched that boy in the face if it's just simple assault or that wasn't me i don't know what you're talking about whatever but you're there you're part of the proceedings with red flag laws basically what can happen is and what has happened in a couple of states already is that family members and here, here, here's the kicker. It can also be friends, ex-wives, anything, okay, that can go to the court and go, uh, I think he's going to be a danger to himself or he's going to come after me with these guns. There has to be, and the problem with it is with, with being ex parte uh, proceedings, you're not there to put up any argument, whether it's right or wrong, whatever. That is against your due process, okay? But before we get all off into that, let's continue on with some more basic information, okay? Castle Doctrine. If you don't know what Castle Doctrine is, it basically says it's a law that designates a person to protect their house or home or their vehicle in some states to protect that against robbery, theft, harm, destruction, whatever you want to say, under different auspices, okay? Now, with that being said, some states have different castle doctrines um some places you got to shoot up in the air to give the person a warning before you can actually try to shoot them if they're coming in your house to do harm to you or your spouse uh, some places don't have that you can if they're on your front porch some place some states even have it if they're just on your land we're not going to argue that but just know that castle doctrine because that's going to play into the state of mississippi's house bill 2055 now, this bill was presented by Senator Jackson of the 11th uh, District and Senator Jordan of the 24th District, okay? Um, it was, as soon as it was uh, presented to the Senate, it was presented and handed down to the Judiciary Division of Accountability and Efficiency and Transparency, okay? Now, the young lady, the senator who is over this, um, Dottie had said to the hottie toddy, um, um, interviewer who interviewed her as soon as this came out the other day that she would protect gun rights to the fullest but that's beside the point it's been presented to her committee okay now with that being said 
I'm going to read the very first few parts of this. Remember what I said about due process already, okay? This is how it's read when they bring it before the, the Senate, okay? An act to create the red flag law to create a process by which a person's right to possess firearms can be restrained if the person is therefore a, therefore a danger to themselves or herself or others and to provide for due process to provide for an emergency hearing, to specify jurisdiction, and to amend section 45-1, 45-9-101, the Mississippi Code of 1972, to provide that a concealed carry license may not be issued to an applicant who is or has been subjected to an extreme risk protection order in the past three years, to provide for pro uh, revocation of a concealed carry license upon entry of an extreme risk protection order to bring forward section 25-7-9 of the Mississippi Code of 1972 for the purpose of amending to conform chancery clerk fees to this act and for the related purposes. Now remember I said up here danger to himself or herself or others to provide for due process. Now right there alone because this is an ex parte proceeding and I will put the link in below this is only 29 pages. This bill is very small, very concisely written, very straight to the point. And the point is, is it's an ex parte uh, proceeding. The person that you're charging has no say so in this whatsoever. So here's the problem that we run into with this. It's already run into a couple other states is, is if someone does decide to enact a red flag law against you, you don't know it. You're sitting in your house. Next thing you know, now, not all states do it this way, but there's been a couple of two that I can actually uh, talk about where the situation was the police got there and because of some things that was told to the police and, and to the law, they came in kind of under the auspice of just breaking down the front door and coming in. In the proceeding of doing that, a police officer was shot and the person who that they were going after was shot and killed. There's no due process there. This person never had his day in court because he's dead because the police department just come busting in the door because of things that were said. Were these things true or not? We'll never know at this point in time. But I can tell y'all, and most of y'all know, if you've got a logical mind to you, people lie to the court all the time. People lie all the time about things. And this is going to happen at again and again but the problem with this law even in this state any other state is is it doesn't go through the due process given to you by the fifth amendment and the 14th amendment okay the erpos that they're talking about that's an emergency risk protection order okay is not the burden of proof is not with the state the burden of proof is with the person um and there's also another proceeding in here let me get to i'm trying to get to section 9 1 so i can read it for you perbatim okay from the thing because i want you to understand exactly how they uh word it all right here it is section 9 termination and renewal the respondent has the burden of providing by preponderance of the evidence that the respondent does not possess the danger of causing personal injury to himself, herself, or other persons in the near future by purchasing, possessing, or receiving, or having in his or her custody or control a firearm. With, with anybody that's in law enforcement, anybody that's in the law will tell you that the burden of proof falls on the state for you to get charged with a, a crime. The burden of proof now falls on you, on the person that's charged. Instead of the burden of proof being proven before they come and arrest you and convict you and, and put you up for trial or put you up for con trial, convict you. Sorry, I'm, my mind's going about a thousand miles right now, so I do apologize about that. No, now it's put on you're arrested and taken into custody. Your guns are, are, are stolen from you by the government. And you are to now have to prove that you are mental soundness and not of danger to yourself or others before you can get released before you can get your possessions back to you now another thing talking about possessions here's the kicker y'all know that i take in people's firearms to, to, to fix from time to time i'm an armorist i'm not a gunsmith as i've explained to y'all before if this was to happen and there's someone else's gun in that person's house when it happens 
If a person other than the respondent claims title to any firearm surrendered under this section, and I love the word surrendered. They're not surrendering them. You've got, they're going to come get them from you, okay? <clears throat> that person may petition the court to have the firearm returned to him or her. If the court determines that the person to be in the lawful owner of the firearm, the firearm shall be returned. Now, once again, they're not, they don't care that it wasn't that other person's. It, the responsibility, once again, falls upon you to prove that that firearm is yours. Once again, that is just wrong. It's wrong as the day is long. I am not a, uh, so much about gun control and, I mean, and stuff like that that I don't understand and don't say that we don't have a problem and we need to fix a broken system. This, this, Senate Bill 2055 is not it. Red flag laws are not it. And it's done through the Chancery Clerk here in the state of Mississippi, people. Through the Chancery Clerk. We're not talking about through the circuit court. We're not talking through the civil court. We're not talking through whatever. No, the Chancery Clerk's office. Y'all think about that for me, okay? So, but do yourself a favor. I'm going to put the link to this down below. If you're a Mississippi resident, please pick up the phone if you're a proponent of this. And whatever. I'm not against it one way or the other way. I think people have their own views and their own way, their own reasons. Everybody has their own reasons for their own things. So if you're for it, by all means, I'm happy for you. Please call your senator and let them know. But if you're like me and you're against it, pick up the phone and let them know that too, okay? Let them know that this cannot pass. This is going to get people hurt. Not only just the people who you're going to get the guns from, but it's going to get police, it's going to put police officers in jeopardy even more so than they already are. Because if this person's got guns and you're going in to get the guns and he doesn't know because it's an ex parte precedence, he might start shooting thinking somebody's breaking in his house. And now you put police officers in danger. You've put this person in danger. It's no no win situation for anybody, y'all. There's other ways to take care of this other than the red flag laws. So y'all, let these senators go read this first and foremost. I want y'all to read it yourself. I want it's only 29 pages. It's and, and it's very concise, straightforward language. It's not a lot of legal ease to it. Very easy to understand. Go read it. Make your own decisions up about it. But let your senators know yes or no, please. And especially if it's no, because I'm a proponent for no. I can see where this is going to be a problem. And with castle doctrine laws where people have a, the ability to protect their home against invasion and harm and damage, as has already happened in two cases in the East, this is going to put people, both the respondent, the person that they're accusing, and law enforcement in harm's way for no other reason than somebody said something. And there's... There's parts in here talks about if you give false information and they find out that it's false that you can be held for perjury. Well, here's the kicker. People lie to the court all the time, people. Okay? Um, and it might be too late by the time you find out they lied. might be too late for a police officer. might be too late for the person, the respondent that, the, that was accused of it. You never know. There might be a child in the house. Gunfire erupts. We know for a fact that uh, people get in the crossfire. It happens. So before a child, before a spouse, before anybody else is hurt with this law, the way that it's done up, there's other ways to go about it, people. There's other ways to do. go to the judge and go to the hearing and, and find out if people need help. If this only helped people that really and truly need it and nobody would do it in a wrong fashion, I would be behind it 100%. The way that's written up, the way that it's worded, and the way that it has gone through in other states already, it's not going to happen. This is the government overstepping their bounds, overstepping due process that's granted to you by the Constitution. And therefore, with the ex parte proceedings, it's taking everything out of your hands. So it's against everything that this country's for. All right? So, y'all, I know this was kind of a rambling. If you got any questions, please ask them in the comments below. I will try to answer them the best that I can. 
if you have and, and trust me i'm gonna leave comments up there so you can comment that you're for it you can comment that you're against it i ask that you it, it, either one of y'all that put comments up please do it respectfully and with dignity okay at the end of the day we're all still human beings we all still have to live with one another whether we agree politically with something that's being passed or not we are still human beings and we're still got to live with one another okay so let's do it respectfully if y'all got anything to say down there um because trust me, I, my my mind tells me to say a lot of things, but I understand that that's not going to happen. Okay, so y'all, um, as a, another note, um, where did it go? Hold on, give me a second. DeSoto County Board of Supervisors on the 26th will have a meeting about and a vote on making the county a Second Amendment uh, sanctuary county. So once again, whether you're for it or you're against it, please let the DeSoto County Board of Supervisors know what you think. Let them know. This is the only way our politicians can know what we want as the constituents that they're supposed to represent. All right. So y'all, by all means, do this. Um, also, I'll put a link to the August um, um, Fox interview with Judge Napolitano where he discusses the un constitutionality of the red flag laws themselves so y'all i'm gonna tell y'all to have a blessed day as always just like i've had and as always be safe